Hello and welcome back to Classic Manure Simulation with me, Mini Tom. So today's episode, I am going to begin the procedure for bench testing my, my engine. So in this episode, it's going to be all about your basic ignition timing. So imagine you've taken your distributor out for doing something to your engine, like painting it or you're refitting it or anything like that. I'm going to show you how to put it back in so it'll run your engine. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it. In terms of what I've been doing, um, the starter motor did work, it's an inertia type, but it was getting a bit jammed up, it wasn't engaging properly, so I've just taken this off. Do not, if you're going to do this, put any oil or lubricant or anything of that nature on here, because if uh, you're driving the car, clutch dust will get onto here and it will cause it to stick. Um, so it's, it's freed off anyway, it should, in theory, engage. Um, it might just be that my battery was a little bit weak and it wasn't doing the best thing it could do. So that's a suck it and see, but what you can obviously do is just, you can manually put it in um, and it will stay there. And then you can turn the engine over and it should then force it back out when you stop it. Um, if it doesn't, then it's a, a case of run for the hills and cry because you might blow a starter motor up. But you know, that's the last of my worries. I want to get it started. The ring gear, uh, it doesn't look to be in bad order. That's a weak point on these of an inertia type. The ring gear can get a bit chewed up, but it looks okay. Um, other things to do, um, what do we do? I, I put the, the new coil onto it, so it's not a new coil, it's from my, it's from my, my Mini, but um, I know it works. Obviously I've got the the, the uh, leads all onto the HT, uh, onto the distributor cap. That's all new in there. I've just checked as well that the points gap is correct, and it is. Uh, it's got a new condenser on it as well, so that's all new. It's, that's all, that all should work. Um, in terms of oil, now this engine, like I said, I did get oil pressure last time I tried it, just cranking it over. Um, it's been sat for five months, so what I have done as a precaution is I've just primed the oil pump. And the way to do that is, if you take out this bolt here, which is a banjo bolt, be careful you don't drop the washers down the back of it, and make sure they go back in. Take your banjo bolt out and just pour or squirt some oil, engine oil, into there, um, and just rotate anti-clockwise so that way towards you rotate that anti-clockwise with the plugs out it's a lot easier rotate it anti-clockwise and that will suck oil straight from here down there into your oil pump and that's how you prime it we know we've got oil i checked that one so what i'm going to do today i'm just going to make sure that this is all set up right because i have had this off so i'm going to make sure that's all timed up correctly with the timing marks on here which the Top dead centre pointer is on the actual wok itself, so I'm going to have to put that back on to figure out where it is. Got to do that. I've got to put the exhaust manifold on, which is a spare one that I've got. And I've got um, I've got the original alloy inlet manifold that came with this engine, which was a British Leyland alloy inlet manifold to go on it, as well as a carb. So that's what we're going to do tonight. And I will talk to you about ignition timing as well. Right, so I don't know how well you can see this, but um, basically you've got cylinder one, two, three, and four. The firing order for an A-series or A-plus engine is one, three, four, two. Okay, so one, three, four, two is a correct firing order for an A-series engine. With your distributor, ideally, cylinder one, your rotor arm, we're pointing up here at about two o'clock to cylinder one. These can be 180 degrees out because on the um, slot for the drive for it, uh, there's a slot. So even though that's pointing down here, that could be 180 degrees out on the slot. So that could be pointing to cylinder number one, but because it's out, it, it you know, it, you've got two choices to put it in. You can either put it in that way or that way. And it could be that it's in that way and it wants to be in that way. It's no biggie because all you do, you just swap around your HT as on your, on your distributor cap there. But ideally I would like it, if it is out, I'd like it to be in the correct place just for ease of servicing in, uh, in you know, time to come so we're gonna have a look at that to do that you need to get the engine to top dead center now top dead center is when cylinder one is at the top of its compression stroke there is timing marks on your flywheel and on later minis you have got timing marks on your crank pulley as well and there's some little teeth here this doesn't have them it predates that so you've got to use your flywheel and the marking that's on your flywheel is a uh, one dash four for one quarter that means TDC on this engine. So I don't know if you can see them pictures, but you have a cap on your wok, which you take off, and you've got a timing mark, which looks like that. That there is TDC. 
You've then got a five, a 10, and a 15 degree increment for before top dead center. And you've also got a, a five degree for ATDC, which is after top dead center. If you've got an automatic transmission, it will look like that on your torque converter. So that's about what you've got on, on the inside. So you've got, on a manual, you've got a quarter, a five, a 10, and a 15. And you've also got a five there. And then on an automatic, that's what it looks like. So, bearing in mind, it's a four stroke engine. So this will turn, your crank will turn twice in a full cycle. Now, you need to make sure you've got the compression stroke. You can either do that by putting your thumb over that and you will feel the compression trying to suck your thumb away, push your thumb away. Or, what's a little bit easier sometimes, especially when it's cold and you've got gloves on, um, if you take off your rocker cover, when you get to top dead center, valves number seven and eight on cylinder four will be on the rock and what that means is that cylinder your inlet valve is closing and your exhaust valve is beginning to open so if i spin this round to what reads top dead center on here so right there is about top dead center you can also put a screwdriver down cylinder one and when it gets to its highest point, you know that that's at the top. But again, is it compression or is it the other one? So we're at, so cylinder one's at the top now. So let's see what these valves are doing. So they're quite tight. So inlet and exhaust. So if we keep turning it, so the exhaust should have opened there, which it didn't. So the exhaust has opened there. Sorry, I think the exhaust should be closing and the inlet should be opening. So right there, there on the rock. Right, okay. So there on the rock, uh-huh. I've got my piston at TDC in cylinder one and my timing mark is showing up at the top here. So I could obviously put my walk back on and just check that that's at TDC, but it is about there. So we know we're roughly in the right place. So that means that yes, this is 180 degrees out. So that should in theory be pointing that way like that, but it's not. So I will swap that around. All it's a case of is just unbolt the distributor, pull it out very gently so you don't disengage the worm gear at the bottom Pull that very gently, spin that around to the right place, pop it back in. Um, as well, my points are just about opening up there, so we know that we've got that roughly in the right place. So what I'll do, I'll get that in the right orientation first and we'll take it from there. Now this should pull out. Don't just yank on it, do it gently so that your worm gear doesn't disengage. Okay, so you're going to have to put it back in. And it'll come out like that. So you can see if the worm gear hasn't disengaged, it's still down in there. And the slot, like I say, should be pointing at two o'clock, which it is. So all I've got to do to get this in the right position, which like I said, it doesn't really matter too much because it already is in the right position for cylinder one here, but I want it up here where cylinder one should be. So all I've got to do, spin that to 180, which is about there, and then put it back in. Before I do that, because it's easier right now, no, that wire there. So if I do that, I'll just show you the advanced and retard. So you can actually time your engine from this point here. So all you would do, you got to set it to the midpoint. So you would wind it in all the way, wind it out all the way, and just find out where your midpoint is, and it goes by clicks. And I think 11 clicks means one degree, and... I think all the way up it's five degrees. Um, so yeah. But I don't know if you can, can you see it? Can you make out that as turning? I'm not sure you can see it. No, you can't see it, can you? But that's how you can advance metallic. Rather than getting in there and having to spin your distributor crazy amounts, you can do it with that bit there. So again, I'll just set that back to 11 o'clock, at uh, two o'clock. Good, it, so it's in roughly the right place. And then it's just a case of getting it in and making sure that that rotor will engage with the worm. 
with the with the slot at the bottom. Right. For some reason it doesn't want to engage in that, whether it's sized differently or whatever, I don't know. But I don't really want to be taking it out. So do you know what? Lost cause, cylinder one's here. Your distributor will turn anti-clockwise, so you'll go one, three, four, two, in that order when you put your, your leads back on. So do you know what? Like I say, we will leave that there. We'll put our bolts back in and call that a pointless effort. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's just for ease of servicing if you were ever going to take it all apart again. Um, but we're just trying to get a proof of concept. I will probably take this distributor back out to clean and paint the engine. So we'll have a look at that then. Um, in terms of your coil, now you have obviously a, pu a plus and a negative, a positive and a negative on a coil, and you've got your HT lead out. So your, your 12 volts positive will go to your plus mark, so you run that to your battery. You've got your negative, which goes to this connection here on your distributor, which is on the end of your capacitor. So that basically goes to there. What happens is when your points open up, it breaks the gap and it's the electricity stored in your coil has got nowhere to go apart from out of this HT lead here down to your um, distributor cap, which then gets turned into there via that cap, via, via that arm there, um, into each one of the four metallic points inside your cap. And that will then transmit that through another HT lead onto your spark plug. And that's how you get your ignition. So for this purpose, we basically need this jumper wire to take your negative to your negative which is up there like so so that's pretty much that done you need to get a 12 volts from your coil to your battery so we'll take that from there like i said straight to the battery or you could take it to that point if you want to as well but i'm going to take it to the battery it just keeps me a bit neater um that's roughly about it you need to make sure your points are set correctly i think it was between 0.35 and 0.4 or 0 0.035 or 0 0.35. Check your Haynes manual. Check that that gap is set correctly. It might, might be 0.35 of a millimetre. Um, check that that's set correctly. So obviously you'd, you'd rotate your engine until it opens up at its highest point, measure it with a feeler gauge and adjust it. So so obviously your capacitor just bolts onto there, make sure it's served and what have you with these little earth wires here, which is your black wires. Um, that's your distributing pretty much set up. Now, on your... I'm going to pull it off. I can't pull it off. But yeah, there's basically four flats on this shaft here. And each flat will open up your points. And that's how it breaks the gap and fires it through the uh, HT leads. Um, but that's how we're going to bench test it, electrically wise. Um, so yeah, next step to do then for us really is to get the timing set to a static timing. And then we'll put on our, our distributor cap which as, I can see, as you can see there is brand new and that's the, the points I was talking about and it transmits from the initial one from that carbon bush there onto that point there, which is just there. So top dead center, we are at top dead center right now. Uh, we're at cylinder one and we just need to make sure that this distributor is just about to open up, which would be set to just about, uh, we're a little bit off there I think, so we'll just, Try and I don't need to retard it a little bit. If it will adjust, it may not do. So yeah, we're up in there. So I'm just about to open at that point now. So that's obviously it. Um, bang on top dead centre. We need to get it to five degrees past. So for that, I'll need to put my lock back on quickly. Find out where that pointer is and put it to five. And just make sure that that, that then points are just about to open. Then we know that that's set to five degrees before top dead centre. So I'll just do that quickly. Uh, flywheel set to five degrees before top dead centre. I've turned my distributor until I've uh, got a spark. And the way I know that I've got a spark is I've taken some jump leads. I have connected, obviously, ground to ground, which in this case is a head stud. I have got my positive 
which I'll connect to my coil, like so. So the engine has now got power going to it. If I take out number one HT lead and HT plug, and I touch this against the body of the car, what I should get is a spark. So, so you should hopefully see a spark any second on this spark plug. There you go. I don't know if the camera picked that up. Hopefully it did. So we know that my firing order is correct and that is firing at um, about five degrees before top left centre. And I can advance and retard it a little bit by using this wheel down here or I could just turn the, the body a little bit. But that should be enough to get the engine running. So ignition wise, we know it's all working. We know I've got a good spark. That's fine. So I'll just take these off quickly. Right, hope you enjoyed that, um, or found it of some use, I know it wasn't the most exciting thing. So yeah, I could have taken the, the worm drive out and turned it around 180 degrees to get that to the exact right place, but I'm going to paint it, it's coming back out anyway, so I'll probably do that then. So um, I hope you found it useful, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching it. If you're stuck with anything, give us a shout, drop some comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video, it does help a little bit as well. So uh, yeah, see you on the next one, which is Engine Start!